Hi there, everyone. Welcome to Pink Lady Presents. I always say, it ain't over till I say it's over. And I say to you, it ain't over till you say it's over. Of lives that are being well lived. And today, I have to tell you, I am excited because I'm with a star. I just, I, when I'm with a star, I just get all overwhelmed and excited, like all of you would when you meet someone that's in the movies and television and theater. And that lovely lady is Lee Purcell. Hi. Wow. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Well, thank you for that amazing introduction. I don't deserve it, and I don't think I can live up to it. Well, I think you do. You're an actor, a producer, a writer, a, a model, a dancer. A, 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 I mean, you, you've just encompassed so many things in your life, which most of us maybe will accomplish one or two of those oh. things. You were in a military family. That's right. And yes. so you traveled a lot of different places. Mm -hmm. They call it military brat or military, you know. Military brat. <laughs> it works. It. That works. I yeah. love it. So, but at three years old, you started your career in Neiman Marcus. What did you do? Well, <laughs> it, it was inadvertent. Okay. Um, we were uh, living in uh, Dallas at the time, of course, because this was the flagship store. Right. And my mother and I were walking down the street. And this rep from Neiman Marcus stopped us and said, oh, you know, whatever she said, which, of <laughs> course, I don't really remember, but, but asked my mother if she would bring me in and so that I could, so that we could have a meeting, right. um, all of us, including me, at three, about um, possibly modeling, um, doing runway. Oh, for, wow. Because at that time, in that era, you had a lot of uh, in-store yes. runway modeling. Right, right, which was fun. Oh, it was great. Did you do it too? Yes, it years was fun. and years ago. Oh. Yeah, it was really, it was, it was fun. And so we went in, and um, that was my first paying gig. So your first TV show, mm -hmm. you were what? Five? I was five. And what was that about? <laughs> well, we were living in uh, Millington. Millington, I have a naval base. Right? And a naval base, which is very close to Memphis, Tennessee, which is a, a real city. Right. And somehow, I don't actually know how, but I got on this show, okay. this very uh, hokey, silly, <laughs> tacky, and but what was the name? fun show, the Mid-South Talent Show. Mid-South Talent. Show. Yes. Ooh, okay. Oh, yes. Very, <laughs> very strange. Anyway, I got on that show, and the first thing I did was, uh, the first performance I did was recite a poem, and wore a cute little dress, Aww. and some, and I have a photo of the TV with me <laughs> performing. Yeah. That sounds darling. And um, and then I did that show for on and off for about eight years. Oh wow! I did. Okay. And they and they were great because even though it was. Um, you know, very small town um, in a big city, but, right. but small town show. It was a really good training ground because they let me do whatever I wanted to do. So you could be as creative as you wanted to. They I just mean, said, what do you want to do this week? And oh. I'd say, oh, I don't know. I think I'll, I think I'll sing. You know, <laughs> okay, what do you want to sing? Oh, I don't know. This, that, and the other. You know, or do you want to have another dance number? Oh, sure. That was fabulous. It was great because oh, I yeah. got to choreograph all my dance You're numbers. You're honing your skills at the same oh, yeah. time. Yeah, it was it was actually really good training because I was a kid who should have been in Hollywood. Now, yeah. how did you get to L.A.? Well, I had come to L.A. first when I was thirteen because okay. my grandmother. I, I had relatives living here. We all so, like to be mentored by mm -hmm. by, by people, and. <laughs> You, had a, you, you were mentored by one of the best, I was. Steve McQueen. Yeah. I mean, like, hello. Yeah. I just, yeah. I mean, when I saw that, I went, wow. Tell me about that experience. Well, he was amazing, of course. Uh, he was, at the time, the biggest movie star in the world. And, but I was, I was lucky because I was very young, and he was of my parents' generation. Uh -huh. We were really um, kindred spirits. Oh. You you also uh, were in producing and directing live theater. Yes. Uh, some of our audience might remember the Green River Players. Well, we were the Green River Roping and Recite and Preservation <laughs> Society Players. I'm surprised I can still say it. I love it. Uh, yeah, we were um, 
all of us were aficionados of the Old West and had a, we had done a lot of westerns, the whole group. Right. And uh, which to this day is my favorite genre. I just love the West. And so one day I got a call from a really good friend, Lita Brew, and said, do you want to do a, like a live poetry and music nice. presentation? I said, yeah. yeah. Oh, and so we looked through our list of people we had known in Westerns and people I had rodeoed with and, and, um, and came up with this list of, of really great actors, uh, Bo Hopkins and... And how long did this go on? Oh, we, went, we did it for a couple of years. Right. Uh, it got to be actually too big. And we couldn't, we just couldn't do it because we were all working, right? But it got to be huge. huge. We got to the point <laughs> where we had... An 18-wheeler truck. Oh my God! And because we ended up with a lot of props and and stage accoutrements, and we had our own musicians and our own band and ropers, and it just it just grew. <laughs> right, by, the whole it, the whole it thing. It grew too big. Right. And not that I'm complaining. Right. That was that was great. Right. But uh, we just couldn't do it anymore. So I think we did a final performance at maybe USC, I think. Right now, there's two things I want to talk about. Sure. Was you have, you just completed a pilot recently, and it was called Weird, I, I love it because it's always so weird, Sick. Sick. Now what is that about? <laughs> it's, it's actually about um, mental illness. Oh, wow. In, um, in young Hollywood. Okay. And uh, it, That's heavy duty. It's heavy duty. Heavy duty. It's, right. I mean, it's fiction. Right. But uh, it is based on things that have happened okay. to people, and, and that's what it's about. It's about a mental institution oh, wow. where these young stars uh, go to when they uh, have it. breakups. Right, when right? they need uh, it, right. And crack-ups. When will call that call be it. on? I don't know. That's up to... The not, gods. Uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I just say, I do it God. and I move on. Right. right? This so, is something else. Yeah. Well, the, the thing that you've moved on to, right now, everyone, we're going to stop for a second and show you a video from her newest feature film, a starring role, Carol of the Bells. So let's stop a moment and let's watch. I'm so behind in my filing. Hey, will you help me alphabetize these volunteer folders? Yes, I can. Oh. Well, look here. Here's Karen's volunteer file. Can I get it? Well, it's confidential. You know what that means, right? I can't tell you what it says. And you shouldn't tell anyone that you saw what it says. You mean my mama? <laughs> you got me. <laughs> I won't tell I promise. She's so pretty. What are these? It's her personal information, her address and phone number. What are you thinking? I want to call her. Oh, well, I suppose you would need a phone for that. She phone right here. Carol, I have to step away. Will you wait here for me? Yeah. Uh, you'll be all alone for a bit. OK. Wait, 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 show me something. Sure. Anything in particular? One of the three numbers. Oh, okay. Well, this one is her work, this one's her home number, mm -hmm. and this one is her mobile. What number should I call her? Well, I would use her mobile. That one there. That one there, her mobile. Mm. Oh, 
Carol, the funny thing about our office phones is that you have to dial nine to get an outside line. Yep. That's confidential, right? Certainly is. Ruff, ruff. <laughs> Who? First of all, Joey Travolta. Yes. Tell me about him. He directed right. Carol of the Bells. Right. Um, of course, everybody always says that when he's John's older brother, which yeah. he is, which he doesn't mind. They have right. a very big, very close family. He has, I think, seven different schools, several schools mm. that teaches people with disabilities mm. Mm. how to work on film sets, how Fabulous. to be a professional. Oh, and they're good. Fabulous. They're really good. Well, I mean, uh, the young lady that you all saw just now, the main uh, actress Andrea. was... Uh, yeah. uh, so she's Carol is a Down Syndrome yes. uh, young lady. Yes. And powerful. I mean, in, in the way you and she's had to funny. manipulate her. Yes. Yeah, I mean, you saw she's funny. Right. You know? Well, it's, it's, it's pathos. It's, with, it's yes. with kindness, caring. Yes. You, in other words, you had to get her to a certain point yes. there. And the way you did it was beautiful, by the oh, way. Thanks. Just beautiful. Of course, I didn't write that John no, Peterson no, wrote No, but, but... Yeah, but you created it. You reached mm -hmm. out him. Where do you want to go, Lee? Well, of course, I want to keep working. Yes. Because that's your life. That's my life. There that's you what go. I. That's Get what it. I do. Correct. And then I want to do as much good as I can for my fellow performers in SAG-AFTRA. Right. It's a huge calling for me, right. and which is why I'm on. I don't know how many committees. Seven, <laughs> six. I don't know. A lot of committees, oh, oh, including wow. the one we were on together. Right. Um, which we will hopefully be on that again Thank together. You. And then I'm on some new committees because the reason I ran for office in the first place okay. was I wanted to, my, I, I was very specific. I wasn't just like, oh, I just want to do union service. No, yeah. I wanted to help women with employment opportunities right. because it still is unfair. Thank you. It is. And I wanted to help mature actors right. with employment opportunities because that is right here. grossly, right here. grossly right. unfair. Right. That's right. And so I, I'm very active in those two arenas and that's my passion. Everybody, you have to understand that not only today was a special day for me because I've always, for me. well, I've always looked at the things that you've done, but I've always looked at the things that you've done for our union and for people as long as I've been a member. And I'm very proud of you. Thank you. And I'm proud to have you sit here today on our show. And I want everybody to know the journey to be a star is not easy. You go through a lot of things. Lee has gone through a lot. Yeah. All of the stars have. But you know what? They have a commitment. They have a commitment to do well, and they have a commitment to make sure that what they do, they touch lives. And you've touched a lot of lives, Lee. Thank you and so I much. And I thank you for that with all my heart. And oh, everyone, it's been a blessed day for me to have Lee Purcell here. So proud of you. You have no idea. Well, God bless you. And likewise. Thank you. We'll be right back. At one time or another, Every family is faced with mobility issues for a loved one. Call Before You Fall is here for you with all the safety and mobility solutions your family needs. Come see Alex in the Call Before You Fall showroom, or if you can't, they'll come to you in one of their fully stocked service vans. So put your mind at ease today. Call Alex at 1-800-829-1491. Remember, be on the safe side. Like I always tell everyone, our program is filled with lives well lived. Well, today is no different. A gentleman, Laurent Gouvler, CEO of Hollywood Chamber of Commerce from 1992 to 2018 is here with us today. Hello and welcome. Glad to be with you. Uh, I know that you're a graduate of Brigham Young University, and then you started your career coming into all the different Hollywood Chamber, San Pedro Chamber, Santa Monica, all the different chambers to make your career a huge one. You actually were a uh, person who always got things done. 
when did you first start your chamber works? You know, working in like a chamber, doing, uh, I know not Hollywood chamber, but you know, your others. You know, I started right out of college in okay. 1978 in Santa Monica. Oh. So I uh, actually had just gotten a master's degree in public administration. I came down to LA looking for a job. My timing was horrible <laughs> because at that time, as you recall, people were getting ready to vote on the important Proposition 13, oh, yes, the yes. infamous Proposition right. 13, and all the government agencies were in a panic. It was like <laughs> the sky is falling. So there were, were no jobs in the public sector. Oh. And I managed to get a job at the Santa Monica Chamber of Commerce. And how long did that last? I was there for a year and a half as okay. an administrative assistant. Right. Uh, the gentleman who hired me, Sam Porter, had been there for like 22 years. Oh, okay. And I had been lucky enough in college to have an internship with one of his former employees who had told me to look him up. So it was a real opportunity uh, to be able to get a job. And the, uh, not, although not the public sector, Chambers of Commerce worked very closely. Right, right. After uh, Santa Monica, I went to San Pedro oh, okay. uh, as okay. the uh, uh, executive director of the San Pedro Chamber of Commerce. Oh, wow. I was there for 12 years. And uh, so I actually was uh, stayed a little too long. I should have, have moved on along before that, but I loved San Pedro. Yeah. <laughs> and then this opportunity arose in Hollywood. The Hollywood Chamber uh, was having some internal difficulties. Yes. They'd actually uh, gone through three executives in three years. You're kidding. And, oh, see, uh, I didn't know that. Wow. And they had all these lawsuits. There were actually three lawsuits as at the time I arrived. And, and the what chamber year was, was that that you came? That was uh, uh, 1992. Okay. okay. So they were virtually bankrupt. <laughs> And my, I had a lot of jobs to go to. <laughs> <laughs> I had a lot of friends saying, "What are you thinking? Yeah, are you, are you out of your mind?" <laughs> But you know, I said, you know, well, it's Hollywood, yeah. and no matter how bad it is, right. it's got the name. Right? It was an opportunity, and I figured no matter what I did, right. it couldn't it's look be any better. better. <laughs> and it's Hollywood. That's right. Yeah. So it was an opportunity. It was kind of scary right. uh, at the time. I'm, you know, I'm from a country town, not uh, not a city boy, and uh, so going to Hollywood, I, you know, was quite an experience. We'll be right back. From infants to seniors, AdvantagePlusCaregivers.com provides quality, compassionate caregivers that you can depend on. And for those departing the hospital, our transitional care service delivers significantly improved patient outcomes. So if you or someone you love is in need of home care, call 1-800-687-8066. AdvantagePlusCaregivers.com. We're all about the care. 1993, you created the Hollywood Chamber of Commerce Community Foundation. What was that? Because you went right to work doing things. Well, we were trying to change the image of the chamber because okay. the chamber had been through all these lawsuits that, of course, being Hollywood, it was in all the news media and the press, and the chamber uh, didn't have the best image. And so we created a foundation in order to give back to the community. Okay. So all the money we raised, and we had a couple of fundraisers a year, all the money that we raised, we gave back to the community in the form of grants to nonprofit Ooh, organizations. Okay. And over the years I was there, we gave nearly a million dollars out in grants. So it adds oh, up. Wow. It does uh, add up. And then you did the Hollywood Chamber of Commerce Political Action Committee. Well, what is that? I, I always hear about it, but I never <laughs> know what that is. Well, uh, a political action committee enables a nonprofit organization to get more involved in government and politics. Okay. Uh, people don't, a lot of people don't realize that chambers of commerce are business associations. We represent the interests of business. Okay. And so it's oftentimes kind of difficult for the chamber itself to get directly involved in politics. So they form what is called a political action committee, which is kind of an adjunct to the organization that allows them to endorse candidates. And that gives you more clout. The name of the game is to de develop clout. I get it. You were meeting all these phenomenal Hollywood stars. How did you, you know, feel? How did you get into that? One who we've dealt with in recent years a lot is Vin DeBona, uh -huh. who you know is yes. the producer of, Amer uh, producer of America's F uh, Funniest Home Videos. Right. You can ask for a nicer person. He's volunteered for the chamber. He's emceed our entertainment conference oh, every wow. year gratis. 
here's a man who's busy, uh, who makes the time for the community. Now that's just one example, but I've, there are so many other people who come out. Uh, when we do, a, we used to do a barbecue for the police and firefighters right, every yeah. year. It's grown to where we'd feed uh, three to 500 Right, uh, I've been there and, 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 and help yeah. serve them and everything. And it's a lot of fun. It is a lot of fun and you feel uh, so proud that you're doing something for our firemen and our uh, policemen. When you first got there, there was, as you said, a tough time. There was a lot of projects that were coming on Hollywood Boulevard there that they came and they were not, shall we say, what you wanted. We had no project. Oh. <laughs> When okay. I came in 1992, if you right. recall, the L.A. area was just going into a recession, yes. which seems to happen about every 10 years. <laughs> so just before that, the redevelopment agency had been formed in Hollywood, and there was a lot of enthusiasm, okay. and there were three major projects on the drawing boards. Oh. Uh, there was one by the Bass Brothers in Texas. They were going to redevelop a whole block. They had bought up the land. Oh. Uh, United Artists was going to redevelop where the Egyptian theater right. is. They were going to build a mall around the Egyptian theater. Wow. And then uh, the, uh, 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 the uh, group out of Indianapolis, the uh, Simon Group was going to build a huge mall where Hollywood and Highland is today. But it was a mall, it was going to be hotels, office buildings. Oh my goodness. All three of these projects fell through. That was it. It took another eight years before we got another major project to go. And so, which was that one? That was Hollywood and Highland. Oh, no. Okay. And Hollywood yeah. and Highland was our first big break. Yes, yeah. Uh, so there was a gentleman who had worked for Disney uh, who came in with this idea to redevelop the area around the Chinese Theater oh, wow. and uh, to build a shopping center that would be anchored not with a department store but with a theater which would be the home the of the Jamie Academy theater, Awards. Yeah. So he actually w approached the Motion Picture Academy and they, uh, uh, they liked uh, uh, the idea and agreed to go in and, and so they built this, uh, this mall. They broke ground in 1998 oh, my goodness. and then it opened in 2001 uh, about uh, two months after the 9-11 attacks. Oh, oh. So uh, there were a lot of challenges yes, there. Yeah. You also did the American Spirit Award. Yes, Adam Schiff gave me an award, right. and uh, uh, I also received a, an award from the, uh, uh, the caucus of uh, producers and, and uh, writers. Well, one of so. the biggest ones I think that you ever received, and I understand there was only one other person that got this, was Mayor Eric Garcetti, gave you the key uh, to L.A. He did, yeah. key to the and, city. And the only other person that got it, I understand, was um, Vin Scully. That's right, so I was in very good company. <laughs> of course, a lot of people would say, well, you're no Vin Scully. <laughs> I would say, I definitely I am, we're gonna, we're I'm gonna definitely show, not Vin we're Scully. We're going to show our audience <laughs> a video about just the way you are when you're in public eye in the Hollywood strip there. Oh, well, thank you. Hooray for Hollywood! Hello, Hollywood, and welcome to today's Walk of Fame ceremony. I'm LaRon Gubler, President and CEO of the Hollywood Chamber of Commerce. Today, we are dedicating the 2,634th, 2,636th, 2,637th star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame to Wayne Johnson, legendary performer Mary J. Blige. Goldie Hawn and Kurt Russell. That was fabulous. That was great. So we got to see you in action just now. Uh, one other thing, I know you're married. You have two children. In fact, today is my 18th wedding anniversary. Oh, and you're and I'm here. You're I'm here. My bride. wife said, where I'm are you going? <laughs> but I know her. And she would have said, you go ahead. A lovely, lovely lady. How old are the children? Uh, my son's birthday was yesterday. He turned 13. Oh, my goodness. And my daughter will turn 15 next month. Wow. So you are now retired. But before that, you are immortalized. Is that the word? I love that word. Because in December 2018, they named the Laron Gouvla Square after you. I mean, you're going to be there forever. That's right, and I told them that the word square was a good, a good <laughs> name to call it. What is new for you? What, what 
What do you see yourself doing? You're not just retired. I mean, you're way too young for that. You know, I'm kind of following in your footsteps. Okay. I'm writing a book. <gasps> I'm writing that. a book about the Walk of Fame. Oh. Uh, you know, Johnny Grant yes. for years talked about he was going to write this book about, right, uh, right. about the Walk of Fame. He never did. No. And one of the reasons I retired when I did is because I wanted to write this <gasps> book about the Walk of Fame and I knew it would take a lot of work and there's no yes. way I could ever, do ever both. do it while right. I was uh, working at the chamber. I just didn't have the time. So I've been spending my time since retirement writing this book. I love it. And you have a clearances. name for it that you can say yet or not yes. yet? Yes. Uh, it'll be called Reach for Your Star, Secrets of Success from the Walk of Fame. So what I've done, because I want to educate people about the Walk of right. Fame, but more than that, I want to share with them some of the greatest thoughts and speeches that yes. were given by honorees. We allow our, our honorees to speak for a while, yes. and quite often uh, they get sentimental and talk about how they got their start. So I have gone through the 300 ceremonies that I emceed wow. and gone through all the uh, videos of those ceremonies and pulled out uh, the best stories. We uh, live stream the ceremonies mm -hmm. now thanks to our media partner Variety, right. Right. which uh, enables everybody to see the entire ceremony, sure. not just clips. One of the things I get to do as president of the LA National Cemetery Foundation yeah. is we just started uh, a presentation coin ceremony. Oh. We were opened in 1889, and this is the first time we've ever done this. So on behalf of the board of directors and our director, Tom Ruck, uh, I'd like to present this to you for all you've done, not just oh. for Hollywood, but in your career, reaching out to people in the community, it comes full circle. Right. So thank you for your well, service thank you very much. to our community. Uh, I will cherish this, and we thank love our veterans. Yes. And uh, I think some of the best ceremonies are when we've honored veterans. Well, right. I think our audience today got a glimpse of a real Hollywood gentleman. And Variety said, Hollywood's real life action hero, Laurent Gufla, from the bottom of my heart, from one who just walked into an office and found a friend, as well as a mentor. I thank you so much. And I know people like myself are saying, you go, girl, because you found a gentleman who truly made a difference in our Hollywood entertainment. God bless you, Ron Goover. Thank your wife for letting you be here today <laughs> on your 18th anniversary. Everyone, we will see you again. God bless you. I'm gonna live till I die. I'm gonna laugh instead of cry. I'm gonna take the town and turn it upside down. I'm gonna live, live, live until I die. They're gonna say, what a guy. I'm gonna play for the sky. Ain't gonna miss a thing, I'm gonna have my fling I'm gonna live, live, live until I die The blues I lay low, I'll make them stay low They'll never trail 